in the air. It's been a mistake. Are you Molly Bloom? Yes, but there's... I want you to walk to Hey, I'm Desiree, and this is Side Eye Cinema. So lately, I've been thinking about ambition, what it means to have ambition, and whether ambition is a good thing. American cinema tends to have this tension between glorifying ambitious people who go after their dreams, but also punishing those who let it consume them. And more often than not, these stories are about white characters, and where women are concerned, being ambitious often means that they're not being authentic or true to their natures. We see this a lot with films in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, and I'm pretty sure we can find more examples if we look even farther back. Today we're looking at Molly's Game, a fairly recent film about a former aspiring Olympic skier who's also the mastermind behind an elite poker game that becomes a target of a major FBI investigation. It's adapted from the memoir, Molly's Game, the true story of the 26-year-old woman behind the most exclusive, high-stakes underground poker game in the world. Now, critics have praised the film for its strong, ambitious female lead, and some have even gone as far as to call this character a feminist hero. Do you know how many witches were burned at Salem? How many? None. They didn't burn witches, it's a myth. They hanged them, or drowned them, or crushed them with heavy rocks. But you know what? As I was watching it, I just couldn't shake the feeling that I'd seen all this before, and that Molly's game wasn't quite as progressive as people made it out to be. So Molly narrates her story, and her voiceover sets the stage for the film's exploration of her motivations and her misdeeds. And after listing her impressive academic and athletic achievements, Molly details her medical condition and serious sports injuries. So this linking of female ambition and illness reminded me of the medical discourse film subgenre, a group of female-driven films that were popular during the 1930s and 40s. In these films, female characters suffer from illnesses that affect their minds, their bodies, and their emotions. Self-narration is depicted as a therapeutic part of their cure, the idea being that as these women channel their energies into telling their stories, they exhaust the self-destructive tendencies that are causing their illnesses. And you know how women's bodies are often sexualized so they just become fetishized objects on screen? Well, in the medical discourse film, women's bodies become signs of hidden issues that must be uncovered. And this is usually where the films introduce a male psychoanalyst, psychiatrist, or psychologist. His diagnosis of the female character's symptoms helps make sense of what she understands about herself, even though she's the one who is narrating her own story. So throughout Molly's game, Molly's confessional voiceover is supposed to demonstrate a high level of self-awareness. How's this for hubris? But despite all this, the film still uses two male characters, Molly's dad and an unnamed sportscaster, to bracket Molly's account of herself. The film presents Molly's troubled relationship with her father, who also happens to be a psychologist, as the key to understanding why her ambitions got her into serious legal trouble. Now, at some point before Molly's trial, her dad psychoanalyzes her. All right, we're gonna do three years of therapy in three minutes. It was so you could control powerful men. Your addiction was having power over powerful men. And of course, he traces all this to her repressed childhood memories of his affairs. So reading Molly's Game as a medical discourse film definitely helps to make sense of its representation of female ambition as a deeply rooted daddy issue. And I can't help but wonder how other films across cultures have treated female ambition. I'm pretty sure there's a doctoral project in there somewhere for someone. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts. Why do you think contemporary films are still recycling these old narratives? Or better yet, what are some films about women that bring a fresh perspective to the topic? Join the conversation by leaving a comment below and be sure to subscribe.